In the previous episode, we learned 15 American vowel phoneme sounds, 10 monophthongs, and 5 diphthongs. The 10 monophthongs are E, 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 U, U, O, A, A, A. And the five diphthongs are A, I, O, E, A, U, and O. In this episode, we'll learn how these vowel phonemes are classified based on their production. To describe the production of vowel sounds systematically, linguists employ tongue height and advancement as criteria. Tongue height means how high the tongue is placed in the mouth. The way we move and shape our tongue plays a big part in giving each vowel its own sound. When we pronounce a vowel, even a small change in the position of our tongues can make a big difference in how the vowel sounds. The vertical position of the tongue can be high, middle, or low. The high position means that the tongue is raised toward the top of the mouth. Mechanically speaking, to raise the tongue, the lips will have to be close to each other. Vowels that are produced high are e, i, u, e. We can call them high vowels. The low position of the tongue means that the tongue is further down. To do this, the jaw should open widely. Low vowels are a and a. The middle position is where the tongue is relaxed, as it is where the tongue rests. Middle vowels are e, a, and a. The other coordinating point is advancement, which means where the sound originates. Vowel sounds can originate at the front of the mouth, at the back of the mouth, and in the middle of the mouth. Vowels that occur at the front of the mouth are the following four. E, I, E, E. These four can be called the front vowels. These vowels are placed in the order of the tongue height. E and E are high vowels. E is a middle vowel and E is a low vowel. For your reference, a front middle vowel can be high or low. E is a low middle vowel. The notation for a high middle vowel is e. In English, the high middle e does not occur as a pure sound, and it occurs only as a part of a diphthong a. Vowels that occur at the back of the mouth are the following four. U, u, o, a. These can be called the back vowels. They are also in the order of vowel height. U and U are high back vowels. Compared with U, U is lower and central. O is a middle vowel. A back middle vowel can be high or low. The notation for a high middle vowel is O. In English, the high middle O occurs only as a part of a diphthong O. Also, due to the cut cut merger, the low middle back vowel O as a pure vowel sound is replaced by A. O occurs as a diphthong OI and an R colored vowel OR. A is a low back vowel. In British English, there are two low back vowels, A and A. A is unrounded and A is rounded. Because of this, the tongue position for A is lower than that of A.
a occurs further back than a. For this reason, some linguists view a as a central vowel rather than a back vowel. In American English, the rounded low back a does not exist. In light of advancement, the vowel sounds originating in the middle of the mouth are a uh and a. Uh. As explained earlier, the back vowel a uh can be also viewed as occurring in the middle. Now that we classified vowels based on the tongue height and advancement, we can create the vowel diagram where the x coordinate is the advancement and the y coordinate is the tongue height. So for instance, E is a front and high sound, meaning that the sound is produced in the front of the mouth with tongue raised high. A is a front and low vowel, and U is a back and high vowel. The vowel diagram provides us with a rough idea of how vowels should sound, but it does not help us pronounce them precisely since some vowels share the same coordinate points. E and I, for example, are high and front vowels. Since they are produced in close proximity, these two vowels can be hard to distinguish and thus hard to pronounce correctly for us ESL people. So we need a way to distinguish them. Linguists distinguish E and E by the tenseness. To say E, we need to make the muscles in the vocal tract work hard. The lips are pulled back and the tongue is tense. But when we say E, the vocal tract is relaxed. So for example, beat and bit, peach and pitch, are contrasted by the vowel sounds being tense in the first words, but lax in the second words. Vowels that are located at the peripheral regions of the vowel diagram, except for a, are called tense vowels because the pronunciation of these sounds requires a muscular effort. Vowels that occur in the central region, including a, are called lex vowels by contrast. Vowels that are nearly each other in the vowel diagram are produced with tongue positions that are close to each other and thus sound similar. In other words, Vowels that occur in proximity can be more difficult to differentiate than those that are further apart in the vowel diagram. For this reason, we first learn individual vowels and then compare vowels in close proximity. Among the tempior vowels, the proximal vowel pairs are these. E, I, E, A, U, U, O, A, A, A. In addition to 10 pure vowel sounds, we'll also learn the five diphthongs of American English. A, I, O, E, AU, and O. Regarding A and O, the first sounds in these diphthongs, E, and O do not occur on their own as a vowel phoneme in American English. We'll also learn composite vowels and all colored vowels when appropriate. Composite vowels are produced when U sound is added to the pure vowel sound. Examples of composite vowels are U and Y. In the following seven episodes, We'll learn all these vowel sounds in detail. We'll begin with the high vowel E 